So, when, uh, when applying Descartes' rule of signs, now the next thing, Kyle Patrick Mibu, um, what we're going to be doing is, so we talked about the rational zero test. That's going to tell us the number of possible rational zeros. And that's it. Just possible rational zeros. Descartes' rule of signs, that's going to tell us the number of positive or negative real zeros that we will have. So to do that, the positive real zeros is pretty basic. What you do is you just take the sign. Now we notice that this is a 5x cubed, so we know that's positive. Yes? So what I like to do is I like to bring down the signs of each monomial. Remember, polynomial is the sum of monomials, right? Monomial after monomial after monomial. So what I like to do is I just like to bring them down. So if I'm going to determine how many positive real zeros we have, real zeros, I bring down the signs. Okay. All I did was I just brought down the signs. And by bringing down the signs, what I can now determine is how many times does the zeros or does the signs change? And here I have two alternating signs. We go to positive to negative and then negative to positive. So when I have two signs change, that means I have two positive real zeros or I'll write the zero. Or zero positive real zeros. And the reason why that's the case is because Descartes' rule of sign says the number of real zeros you have is always going to be the number of alternating signs, which we had are two, or, or minus an even number. Well, if I take two and I minus two, that gives me to zero. So therefore, this polynomial, the zeros of this, it's possible for it to have two real zeros or no real zeros. And we won't know that until we actually investigate. Yes? Yeah, let's say, if, let's say there's five alternating signs. Then it'd be five, three, and one. Because you keep on subtracting two for every single possibility. Yeah. So, so if I, if let's say there's five alternating signs. The answer would be five real zeros or three real zeros, or one real zero. So you just keep on subtracting an even number. Make sense? I know it's a little confusing. Already. So let's go and look at the negative, because negative is a little bit more difficult. So to determine the negative, you actually have to do a little mathematics here. For the negative, you now have to not evaluate for f of x. You now have to evaluate for f of negative x. So don't get lazy on me and evaluate for the same one. You have to don't do the positive. A lot of students like to do the positive. It's pretty basic. You just look at how many times the sign changes. But I'm going to ask you for negative as well. You have to make sure you evaluate for negative x. Now we just look at this. Any negative number raised to an odd number is still going to be negative. Negative times a positive 5 is going to now be a negative 5 x cubed. Negative, any negative number raised to an even power is now be positive. Positive times negative, or negative 9 will be a 9x squared. Uh, 2 times negative x would be a negative 2x plus 6. All right. So again, I bring down the signs. Minus, 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 plus. And what you guys can see in this case is now we only have one alternating sign. Yes? Uh, yeah, it's 28. But remember, you got to follow order of operations. You square the you squ you square this first, then multiply by the negative nine, right? So just remember those order of operations. So yeah, that's a 28x. Um, but notice we have one we have one negative zero, right? Now, can I subtract an even number from one and still have a num a value? Well, yeah, you'd get a negative, right? If you subtract 2 or 4 or 6, an even number from 1, you're going to have a negative answer. We, you can't have negative number of zeros, right? You're counting number of zeros. You can't have a negative value. So therefore, there's only going to be one negative real zero. OK? And that's what you guys have for that. I should have told you guys to write that down in your notes, but that's OK. Well, you guys have it. Yes. Uh, 